This is what Nvidia could have given us, but chose not to. No stars in Starfield. And no sense in what AMD's doing here, but I kind of like it. I this is this is an exciting future. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your bright host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Tuesday, September 12th, 2023. Got it. Let's jump on in to talking about the first details, which is the revealed version of the RTX 3090 Super that NVIDIA never that, released. That doesn't exist. So there was a lot of rumors that this was gonna be potentially made at some point. And actually we even saw some pictures of like just the little carvings that said 3090 Super on that metal bracket, but not the full thing. Turns out, according to at least this canceled prototype, they were going with a stealthed out all black aesthetic. Look at how gorgeous I that really looks. I really like that. That's one of the reasons I love the ARC A770, not to make it about Intel all of the time, <laughs> but also the, the IO shield, they matte black that too. Oh man, that this just is, looks so good. I I very much prefer this to the previous generation of the Super Series, which the mirror finish. Yeah, the, the mirror finish. On I didn't it, like it. Is it was ridiculous. So an all matte black would have been the exact opposite direction. I am sad that it does not exist. Yeah, I, I'm I'm with you there. <sighs> It just looks so good. It could have been so much greater. Maybe we'll get it on the 40 series super edition if that happens to come out. Fingers I'm, crossed. I'm personally thinking we're gonna get one. That's my internal vibe check is that Nvidia doesn't want to release a new generation for us. They're still making all of the money on AI. So if they just beep up, beep up, beef, beep, beep, beef up. <laughs> <laughs> what we currently have. I think that makes some technical sense. And then they charge us more for it and we still buy it and Nvidia still wins. Good numbers all around. Look, I'm not gonna lie. If they gave me an option of a matte black graphics card, my upgrade sensors would be tingling. And Mm. You know what's tingling right now? What? Today's video is sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Ugreen and their 300 watt five port PD fast charger. This is their first 300 watt five port GAN charger with a single dedicated 140 watt output port. It's created for multiple devices, essentially everything that you could possibly need to charge on a given day. You can fast charge multiple laptops simultaneously, reducing the need for multiple chargers in a shared space on your desktop. And it also has the PD 3.1 charging protocol for higher speed charging than before and a wider range of voltages for a larger variety of devices, which again means faster charging speeds to more devices, reducing clutter and reducing the time that you need to be on the break. And this fast charger has four USB-C ports, one USB-A port. It has intelligent distribution of output current, fast charging without hurting the devices, and it can easily charge, again, five devices at one time, no problem. And it also has a built-in smart thermal guard system, which monitors temperature changes in real times and and take 6,000 temperature readings every single minute to make sure that you are safe while doing all of this fast charging. The brick is so small, but you get a lot of versatility out of it and it allows you to take care of all of your charging needs at once. So check out Ugreen's 300 watt Nexode GAN charger at the link in the video description. Get your devices charged up. Big thanks again to Ugreen for sponsoring today's video. That was some good tingles. You know, you can use that Ugreen 300 watt charger for the launch of the iPhone 15, which is gonna be today. It's gonna get announced today after hot news is released so we're still anticipating a bunch of changes i just want to remind you that it's happening because it's going to be all over your youtube feed everybody will talk about it and you cannot escape it yeah i was about to say there's no escape in this it's also going to have USB C, so i'm personally excited to mm -hmm. see how Finally. apple convinces us that they invented it they invented USB-C and are giving it to us because they're revolutionaries, of course, and not a single other company would have reasonably done this. They have, they've provided so much value and lightning over the years, but now they have come to bequeath us with the grand technology that is USB Type-C. I do not see them being like, we didn't want to, but they made us. I see that. I see them pretending they're gonna like be this like is their decision. Lightning too, and just ignore USB-C entirely. Oh, they brand it as their then own. It's, then it's them who made it. Oh, that's such a good idea. That's brilliant. And then they'd be like, oh, because of the data transfer capabilities of Lightning too, we've been able to make the cable longer for you because of how it's all being designed. Apple. Hey. You know what? If you say you invented it, I'll I'll parrot that here on Hot News. When are we gonna get uh, USB-C to lightning adapters? Just so all your accessories still work. So I can plug my iPhone 15 into my iPhone 14 and then they can bump? <laughs> Is that what you're talking about? That's exactly what I'm I'm pretty sure at. there are lightning to see adapters. <laughs> if that's what you're yeah, doing. but we gotta make an official app. You're not thinking A to A, you were thinking like, 
anyway. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, even though the 15 is launching today, we're only getting the 14th of Intel's core series CPUs. Mm. Next month, according to leaked reports, we now have the release date of the Raptor Lake refresh that you have been hearing so many small changes about. The October 17th date is when it's gonna go on sale. The 16th is allegedly when embargo of uh, advertising for it will happen. They have an ad embargo the day before. Interesting. And then a review embargo the next day and sales. This I don't is, like that sales this and is, reviews on the same day. Yeah, it's never a good sign. Uh, it's probably gonna be faster than what we currently have but I can't give it away on the cannonball because it's not going to be around when the cannonball happens. Intel, what the heck? <laughs> Actually, this happened last year. Uh, we did the cannonball later in the month and then they launched the 13900K and I gave those away. Maybe we should do the cannonball later in the month, but the problem with that is it gets too dang cold and it's then your cold. range and efficiency all changes and I don't, it's, it's complicated, but you know what's not? Deals. Oh! Yeah, I yeah. like them when they're just simple and plain and good stuff. You giving us some plain deals today? I've got some plain deals for you today. Oh, it's like a potato. Yummy, yummy deal list. <laughs> so when I worked at Jason's Deli, they had a potato called the Plain Jane. So whenever I hear plain, I think potatoes. There, it doesn't make any sense to everybody else. I get it. There's My a bad. connection there. I see it. I see it. And hey, deals. First up, we have the Cooler Master Sickle Flow 140 V2, which is their ARGB case bands, which you can pick up for only $9.99, making it $12 off. 10 bucks a fan. Goodness. That's, it is ARGB. It they, is. They have it. It's also 140 mil. So, hey. It's bigger. Ah, that's a lot of RGB on today's deals. This is not plain. You promised me plain. Is, is RGB not plain? Everyone uses it. It's become plain. I don't like that. But then next up, we have the Game Max Spark Pro Mid Tower ATX case, which you can pick up for only $49.99, making it $30 off for just a little simple case. That looks like it cannot breathe. Why do they have two RTX 20 series GPUs in there? That thing is on fire. I guarantee you it can. Oh, it's intake from the bottom, I'm seeing. I looked at the picture earlier and I saw those graphics cards and I was like, whoa. <laughs> hey, for 50 bucks, listen, you're not, you're not picking from the cream of the crop, but. <laughs> Oh, that looks like choose a reasonable GPU. That looks like an asthma attack waiting to happen. And then lastly, we have the Deep Cool LS 720, which is a 360 millimeter AIO CPU liquid cooler, going for only $99.99, making it $47 off. Okay, I can get behind that deal. That one's plain RGB. And with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm Andrew back to Brett for the rest of the articles. One, two, three, four. I declare a thumb war. <laughs> <laughs> Undefeated Thumb War Champion 2023 here at UFD Tech. Can't That's stop me. us right now. Reese, you want a bad deal? I'm going to give you one. Actually, okay. Starfield's going to give it to AMD users. What? We talked in yesterday's episode of Hot News that Starfield's the first AMD exclusive partner mm -hmm. game that's out there. So there's preference to AMD when it comes to their hardware. But turns out, not for the game itself. You can't get stars in Starfield if you're running AMD. Totally fine if you're running NVIDIA. I'm so confused. This is a weird little bug that's happening where it does not render a planet, a local star, if you're on a barren rock in an atmosphere situation mm -hmm. on specific planets. It will not have the local star for that star system. So showing this is being taken on a 6950 XT. This is being taken on an Whoa. RTX 4080. There is literally content in the game on NVIDIA that you do not get on AMD. Whoopsie. This is a weird situation. It probably is just a bug, some sort of problem yeah. that they'll get patched out, but it is, it's actually <laughs> hilarious that NVIDIA users get more content. More stars. You knew you knew that NVIDIA was just slipping the cash oh, behind yeah. the scenes trying to be like, hey, hey. Give us some <laughs> extra stars in there. And I want AMD to give us extra stars in their handheld APUs. So we're actually getting the first benchmarks coming out of the upcoming Z1 processor. Oh. Yeah, so this is the cut down version of the Z1 Extreme. This is the Z1 Extreme. This has the beefy setup that can go up to 8.6 teraflops, has all of the cores that you could possibly want. But this next gen of Ryzen Z1 is built on Phoenix 2, not Phoenix 1. And it gets even weirder than that. This is gonna be, at least from we can see in consumer parts, the first implementation of Zen 4 C cores what? to consumers. So the cores on the Z1 are gonna be hybrid between just the regular Zen 4 cores and Zen 4 C cores, which are the dense versions. It's not like Intel Z mm -hmm. cores. These are just 
tighterly packaged, which according to the benchmarks, if you run Zen 4 and Zen 4C at the same clock speed, they perform identically. Okay. But Zen 4 can run faster because it's not all bound up like a little jack-in-the-box ready to spring out and scare you. Like, I don't have any trauma from that whatsoever. I'm not <laughs> talking about that anymore. But according to these benchmarks, the Zen 1 compared to the 7840U, which is essentially the Z1 Extreme yeah. with AI cores, it turns out that it's about half-ish, like a little bit more than half in some synthetic benchmarks. I'd say about 60% according to these numbers, but then it gets weirder in the gaming department. So it looks like Honkai Star Rail is faster on the Z1 than it is on the 7840U. That has to be, it's bouncing up against like a 60 FPS cap because that yeah, doesn't make yeah. any sense. If you look at Genshin Impact, Metro Exodus, Cyberpunk 2077, and Forza at 720p low, you can see the 7840U. Makes more sense. Absolutely beats it, making the Z1 Extreme about 25 to 50% faster than the Z1 in these games, which is good to see. I'm actually excited to see that this is the mm -hmm. first implementation of C cores. I don't like the Z1 when it comes to it being implemented in something like the Rogue Ally because that's only a hundred dollar price cut for a significant performance loss. Yeah, it, it doesn't make sense to like actually grab it, but in other devices this could be implemented so well. I really hope that we get something like a Steam Deck competitively priced version of, you know, maybe not the Rogue Ally, but the Lenovo Legion Go Minus and it has the Z1 for... Something like a light version. Yeah, $399, that would be fantastic. But $599 for 60% of the performance? No, but it's cool to see that the Zen 4C cores are rolling out, the Z1 is happening, and I uh, I await the future of more handhelds and more this APUs. Very cool, I am APU gang. Yeah, AMD is not gonna give us high-end gaming graphics cards. Please give us actually at least competent APUs, even on desktop. AMD, I'm begging you. You know, people think I hate AMD. People think that I don't like them. We read in the comments all the time that I am anti-AMD. No, I love a lot of what AMD does. I just also hold them to the same standard that I hold Intel and Nvidia to, which is they bungle things up. It's just that the general sentiment is AMD do no wrong. I stand alone as a pillar of <laughs> <laughs> complaining about everything. Claus Eno in comment response says, the lack of next gen cards might finally make game devs actually optimize their code because it's possible to draw so much more out of our hardware. No, again, we've had this conversation. Games have always been broken on the PC port. This is not a new implementation. This is not something that we've seen. It is easier to develop for a homogenous system like you get with the consoles. It is very difficult to, to develop and optimize for every combination of parts known to man. Yeah, it's it's a completely different story behind the scenes. You have to you have to support so much, it's very difficult to optimize for that. And then on top of that, what has happened is that companies feel like they're not gonna earn as much money on the PC side of things, so they half-bake it. They don't put as much effort into it. But then PC gamers don't buy it because they have baked it. It's a it's a vicious cycle yeah, circle. Unfortunately. Mm, don't like it. Oshi Watcher says that I'm pretty sure that RDNA 4 chips are only gonna have mid-end releases due to high-end chips aren't working as planned. Instead, AMD focused their plans on RDNA 5 for better cost efficiency. You're pretty sure? How are you pretty sure? Are you working in, in the fabrication side of things? Are you in touch with AMD's engineering? Or you got GeoBeans over here saying, I heard that the high end was canned because they couldn't get the chiplets to work well. Yes. We talked about that here in Hot News. Are you are you all pretty sure because you hear things that we talk about as rumors and then like just start going spreading it everywhere? Because it's it's a report for sure. I hope that it's wrong. Yeah. I like nobody's nobody's sure. Nobody knows what's going on. I mean, these guys seem pretty sure. Oh, you're right. My bad. Oshi Watcher. My bad. Please forgive me. You definitely know what's going on. Well, Legu says RX 8000 is going to suck. Well, I didn't know you guys had this <laughs> time machine. All right, that was a taste of my own medicine right there. <laughs> you're right, you're right. I should I should communicate a little bit more speculatively. Potentially. Yeah. yeah. Roy Mustang says, and this is a controversial one. Personally, I am totally fine with NVIDIA and AMD focusing on AI and not making GPUs. I'm gonna give them time to explain. Linda, listen. Yeah. I feel like games have been released half-baked as of late and the developers leave the processing and rendering down to gamers and their consoles and gaming PC. A fully optimized game shouldn't be hard on your computer providing it has more than adequate power. It goes back to... The first comment. 
Yeah. I don't see how this changes anything. Just because you don't get a new gaming graphics card doesn't mean that all of a sudden these companies have the incentive to make better ports. But on top of that, let's say AMD, Nvidia, they skip a generation. We don't get new cards until 2025, right? Wouldn't that show to game developers to prioritize the PC side even less because yeah. we're not actually pushing the boundaries anymore? There's no new tech for them to highlight their new features in their video games. It's not free marketing like Cyberpunk used Nvidia's DLSS and all the new ray tracing features to actually push. So why do it? Yeah, I think AI taking precedent over gaming graphics cards leaves the PC market to then be looked at as being second place, not only to AI, but then also to consoles. I think this will only further exacerbate all of the problems that you're mentioning rather than alleviating all of them. Why would game devs prioritize PC releases when hardware companies aren't even prioritizing PC releases, consumer PC releases of their own graphics cards? We might just see a harder fork between focusing on AI on the PC side of things and like console development and production. We got all switched to the PS5 Pro. That's it. You got nothing else going on. J Dog saying Chevy is using the 4090 connectors. <laughs> they just need a core mod. That was a very good one. That's about the Bolt EUV shocking people. Stefan Entian, The Verge PR says chocolate flavor thermal paste. I try it. Yeah. You know, if, it was, if it was edible. Just because it's flavored, okay. If it was edible. <laughs> okay, where's why, this? Why would they flavor it if it wasn't edible? That's a good point, Mr. Easter. You want to you wanna take our idea, run with it, and ship me at least a, you know, the pre-production version of it? Oh, I'll feed it to Reese. Blade Crew saying, what breakfast? You always upload 2 to 3 p.m. in the evening in South Africa. It's 2 to 3 p.m. in the evening? Yeah, number one, dude. <laughs> Sorry, that, that, <laughs> that that's what I stuck on That there. doesn't exist. Number two, I don't say breakfast. I never say have. Breakfast. Actually, I did say breakfast no, at no, some point. No. Okay, that never happened. He's right. Breakfast is whenever you're watching hot news. Are you eating? It's breakfast. If you're watching hot news, are you not eating? Your stomach's digesting something, might be your own saliva. That's still breakfast. You're welcome. And then Chanad saying, I feel the tension between these two. If someday they look awkward in the video, I'll know something happened. Unless they really liked it, then I don't know. What is that comment? I don't know. See, okay, when I chose this one, I thought he was saying there was like a aggressive tension. But as I read this out loud, I feel like he's saying there's other undertones. Yeah, that's. I thought the exact same thing as you, and then as the comment went on, I was like, mm. And then the, unless they really liked it, then I don't know. Yeah, that one. That one threw me off, sorry. I'm thrown off too, I don't know how to end this. <laughs> Catelyn, can we get a live look at your reaction? All right, that's the end of hot news. See you to hot tomorrow, tamale. See you to hot tomorrow. <laughs> Forever and always. So oh, this chair goes down. <laughs>